Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be making up some Southern Carolina barbecue, and I believe I may have hacked Rodney Scott's mop sauce. Stay tuned. All right, so before I get started on this video, I do want to talk about Carolina barbecue. There is no doubt that Carolina is king of pork, just like Texas is king of brisket. Now, I did a ton of legwork for this video. I called several barbecue restaurants in Southern Carolina. I read a lot of books and I saw a lot of videos trying to crack Rodney Scott's mop sauce. Now, one of the most interesting things in speaking to a lot of the restaurants in Southern Carolina is that some of them do whole hog and some of them just use the pork butt itself. It was interesting to find out that there was even a barbecue restaurant that doesn't add any dry rub to their pork before they smoke it. So I want to give a special thanks to Bob Sutton at Bully's Barbecue in Southern Carolina. He didn't give me his recipe, but he kind of guided me in the right direction on which rubs I needed to use. Now, one thing that's interesting about Carolina is that they break themselves off into different regions and each region has their own favorite sauce. Some of them like a mustard based sauce. Some of them like a tomato based sauce. And my personal favorite, the vinegar sauce, which is what we're going to be using on today's video. All right, so let's make our dry rub for our pork today. I've got a quarter cup of black pepper, quarter cup of salt, quarter cup of garlic powder. This is granulated garlic, quarter cup of paprika. I'm going to give it some nice color. And the last ingredient is two tablespoons of a cayenne pepper. All right, let's cover this up and give it a good shake. Real simple rub, five ingredients. All right, there it is right there. Let's make our mop sauce. All right, so we're gonna make Rodney Scott's mop sauce. And again, I read a lot of books, read a lot of articles, and saw a ton of videos. And this is my hack of Rodney Scott's mop sauce. So I'm starting with three cups of vinegar. To that, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of black pepper, two tablespoons of cayenne pepper, two tablespoons of crushed red pepper. I'm also gonna be adding two tablespoons of sugar. Now this actually caught me by surprise but Rodney Scott did say that he had a little bit of sugar just for a little bit of sweetness in his mop sauce. Last ingredient is I'm using a quarter cup of a dark red chili powder. So I'm just gonna add all those dry ingredients to our vinegar. I'm also gonna add the juice of half a lemon. And don't throw your lemon away. We're still gonna use this. So I'm gonna mix this up really good. So we wanna make sure that sugar and salt dissolve and also mix up the other ingredients. All right, so I've got two mason jars right here and I've got my half lemon that I cut into quarters. Just throw a quarter into each jar. So half of this sauce I'm gonna be using to mop our pork once it's almost ready. And the other half, we're gonna be using towards the end of our cook. So that's mixed up really well. So pour half into each jar. All right, so I covered up my mason jars. These are gonna sit on my counter. On occasion, I'm just gonna come up and give them a good shake. Let me go grab the pork. I wanna thank Cometeer for sponsoring today's video. Cometeer is definitely my new favorite way to enjoy my coffee in the morning. It's quick, takes less than one minute, and they do come frozen in this nice capsule. Now, Cometeer does source its beans from the best roasters throughout the country. Now, what Cometeer does is they brew their coffee and then they flash freeze it at negative 321 degrees to seal up the freshness of the coffee. So all you gotta do is dump your capsule into your coffee cup, pour in your hot water, about eight ounces. Give that a good mix. And I gotta tell you, that capsule melts really fast. And this cup of coffee is ready. Now my daughter loves lattes. I'm gonna show you how to make that. Just put some ice in your coffee cup. I'm using a vanilla bean almond milk. Now when you're making lattes, you want to thaw out the capsule inside your fridge overnight. Just throw that into your milk. Look at those beautiful colors. Give that a good mix. And there is your delicious iced latte. One other quick note is don't toss your capsules in the trash. You can actually recycle these because they're 100% aluminum. All right, let's give our coffee a try. I'm going to drink my nice hot cup of coffee. My daughter's got her iced latte. 
Here we go. Perfection. What do it's you think? It's so good. It's good, huh? <laughs> mm. I do want to invite you guys to use BBQ40 as a discount code. For a limited time only, you can get 40% off your first Cometeer order. Make sure you guys check out the link below and get yourself some of this delicious coffee. All right, so for this cook, I am going to be using a pork shoulder and also a rack of spare ribs. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Southern Carolina barbecue, there's a lot of restaurants that do whole hog, but most of them do pork shoulders as well. Now, I don't have a whole hog, but the closest thing that I can get is a pork shoulder and also a rack of ribs. So I'm not using any binders for this cook. So I'm just going to grab the rub that we made up earlier and go ahead and season the pork butt and also our ribs. Season it very well. Now this is a bone-in pork shoulder, which is what I highly recommend that you use. For some reason, if I use the boneless pork shoulder, the meat comes out a little bit drier and not as tasty. Now the pork shoulder is gonna take about seven hours to cook, and the ribs is only gonna take about four hours. So I'm gonna put on the pork shoulder first, and then about four hours into it, I'll throw on our rack of ribs. All right, so I'm gonna season the back of these ribs and we'll see you guys outside. All right, so for this cook, I am gonna be using my Pit Barrel PBX. If you guys have been wanting to get one, check out the link below and get 10% off your order. So I've got my charcoal basket filled up with Kingsford Blue Charcoal. Just gonna grab it and put it inside my drum. I'm also gonna be using some Hickory Wood Splits from Gourmet Wood Products. And this is available at Academy Sports and Outdoors. So if you have one in your area, check them out and grab yourself a few boxes. All right, so I am gonna be using my grill gun from Grill Blazer. Just turn on the gas a little bit, pull the trigger, and light up the charcoal. All right, so I'm gonna throw in our piece of hickory right on top of the coals. It's gonna give us some good smoke. I'm gonna install our grate. I'm gonna cover this up, let it get nice and warm, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so my pit barrel's been warming up for 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and load up our pork butt. All right, I'm gonna be cooking this with a fat cap down. Now, one of the questions I often get is what these rods are for. So these rods actually regulate the temperature inside your pit barrel, keeping that temperature in that 275 to 300 range. And these are also used to hang your food with the supplied hooks. So if you wanted to hang some ribs, etc., you can actually use these rods for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up. I'm gonna let that pork butt cook for about three hours and I'll bring you guys back at that point. Stay tuned. All right, so it's been three hours since we added our pork butt. Let's take a look at it. Now at the one and a half hour mark, I did come and flip the pork butt just so that it cooks evenly. And that's looking really nice. Let's get an internal temperature here. I'm sitting at 165 degrees internal. And again, I did flip this at the one and a half hour mark. So I'm gonna flip it back over again. Oh man, look at that. That's looking really nice. So I still have plenty of charcoal, and that hickory split that I added earlier is still going. So here's my rack of ribs. Look at how big this PBX is. I've got a full rack of spare ribs. I've got a big pork butt right here, and I still have plenty of room for another one if I wanted to. All right, so I'm gonna give that pork butt about an hour or so, then I'm gonna come outside and wrap it up in foil. Stay tuned. All right, so the pork butt has been on for four hours. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it in foil. So I'm gonna pull all the rods off. The ribs have been on for one hour. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over, just like that. I'm gonna pull the pork butt off and wrap it up in foil. Check out that color. All right, the pork butt is going back on with a fat cap down. Put our rods back in. So we still have plenty of charcoal, and believe it or not, that piece of hickory, you can see it just ignited there on the bottom, is still going. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on, let this go for another two hours, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so the total cook time for our pork butt has been seven hours, and the ribs have been on for about three and a half hours. Let's take a look and see what we got. So at the sixth hour, I did add a little bit more charcoal and one more split of wood, because our coals were dying out. Again, at the sixth hour, our pork butt, ooh, man, it's nice and tender. We're probing at 196 degrees, and our ribs right at 201 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna take the pork butt off. 
I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap our pork butt and create a little boat. All right, so I got a large metal spoon. All I'm gonna do is poke and loosen up the meat on our pork butt. Because we're about to mop this. And that thing is nice and tender. So I've got my mop sauce right here. I'm just gonna mop this all over our pork butt. Let those juices penetrate that pork. This is gonna be fantastic. All right, our pork butt is going back on. All right, next I'm gonna pull the rack of ribs off. I'm gonna do the same thing to the ribs. Just bust them open a little bit. Let our mop sauce penetrate the entire rack. On with our mop sauce. So I'm also gonna throw these ribs on a foil boat. Just keep the juices in one place. Check that out. Ribs are going back on. All right, I'm gonna give this about another hour. We'll see you guys inside. Stay tuned. All right, so the pork is just about ready. So I'm gonna make some coleslaw for Carolina barbecue sandwiches. So when I reached out to the barbecue restaurants in South Carolina, they said that about half of the people asked for coleslaw on their sandwiches. So it's an option. I think it's a 50-50 option. So I've got 16 ounces of a coleslaw mix here. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of black pepper. Half tablespoon of kosher salt. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of a Dijon mustard. Half a tablespoon of sugar. And two tablespoons of an extra virgin olive oil. There's no mayo in this coleslaw. Okay, get in there with your hands and give this a good mix. It smells so good. Our coleslaw is gonna have a nice snap to it. And it's gonna complement our Carolina barbecue. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge, go grab the pork, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so the Carolina barbecue is ready and it has been resting for one hour. And the total cook time was right at eight hours. The aroma in this kitchen is absolutely amazing. This does not smell like pulled pork. It smells like Carolina barbecue. Check out the color of our ribs. And look at how tender these are. I mean, they're just falling apart and that's what I want. So I'm gonna take the bones out. Look at that nice clean bone. Again, a lot of barbecue joints in Carolina do whole hog. So this is as close to a whole hog that I can get. I could have done a pork belly as well, but I think the ribs and the pork butt are plenty. Look at that, just shredding. Perfect. Remember, these were full spares, so you will have some cartilage in here. Make sure you take that out. All right, so I've got all of the rib meat pulled. It smells absolutely fantastic. The texture of this rib, when it's pulled, is absolutely amazing. So here's our pork butt right here. And look at that. Bone came off extremely clean. Just gonna pull this real quick. Oh man, this is hot. Now, if I do see any heavy fat pieces, I will take that off. I know some of you guys are like, leave the fat on its flavor, but some of this fat is not something you wanna eat. So I'm gonna pull this and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so I've got the pork butt completely pulled. Now I'm just gonna mix it in with our rib get all those flavors to mesh together. So I can see why they cook whole hog in Carolina. You have the different textures of meat, from the pork butt, to the ribs, to the pork belly, and it's all got different flavors too. I want a little bit of texture, so I'm not gonna shred this completely down. Got some nice barky pieces in there. So I did put some of the Carolina mop sauce into this bottle, and I'm gonna add just a little bit if my guests want more, they can add more to their sandwich. All right, I'm gonna change out my gloves. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna make ourselves a Carolina barbecue sandwich. 
All right, before I make my sandwich, I did forget one ingredient for our coleslaw, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of celery salt. You can add some celery seed or celery salt, just a little bit. Give that a good mix. There we go, that's perfect. All right, so I've got my hamburger buns here. I'm gonna add a good pile of this on each sandwich, just like that. Nice and moist. I'm gonna add some coleslaw only to one of these sandwiches. This bad boy right here. Yes, sir. Let's give these bad boys a try. All right, let's give these sandwiches a try. I have been waiting all day to try this Carolina barbecue sandwich. Here we go. Man, the flavor from the pork butt and the ribs with that hickory smoke is fantastic. I'm gonna try some with a little bit more sauce. Here we go. Mmm. That's the way to do it. Man, that's extremely flavorful. Now let's try the sandwich with the coleslaw. There we go. Man, this is delicious. I'm gonna try some with a little bit more sauce. There we go. That is money right there. Mm. So you guys know I'm in Texas and I love my Texas, but this Carolina style barbecue is fantastic. The sandwich with the coleslaw and that extra sauce is the way to eat the sandwich. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is Rodney Scott's mop sauce or not, but whether it is or not, you guys have got to give it a shot. I hope you guys enjoyed this Carolina barbecue video. If this is your first time to my channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.